Welcome to our fourth and final lesson in our course on performance indices, where today we'll go through a material selection example along with our performance indices to identify the top material candidates for the deck of a longboard using ANSYS Grant EduPack. A longboard is a type of skateboard used for downhill and slalom racing, as well as just cruising around town. If you live near a university, you've probably seen one before. They're longer than typical skateboards and have larger wheels, so they can go at much faster speeds, but they're not quite as agile. You're not going to be doing a kickflip with one of these. For our case example today, we're going to be looking at the top materials for the deck of the longboard. So looking at some images of the longboards here, you can see that the deck has a slight bow to it as part of the design, but we wouldn't really want this to deflect much further. This is a mode of transportation that's used outside, so it needs to be resistant to a range of temperatures as well as both rain and seawater in case I want to go for a ride on the boardwalk by the beach. I also don't want this board to fail or permanently deform while I'm using it. And despite the fact that I ride around on it, I will have to carry it by hand at some points, so I want this board to be lightweight. Using our Ashby selection methodology, which I've shown here on the screen, let's go through and select these top candidate materials, starting with our translation step. The function or the load bearing of this board, we can think of it like a panel in bending. The constraints, thinking back to my description, I said there was some range of acceptable temperatures. In this case, we're gonna go from negative 20 C to 60 C or minus four Fahrenheit to 140 Fahrenheit for my American friends. We have some minimum value of strength, 30 megapascals, and some minimum Young's modulus of 7.5 gigapascals. We determine these values by looking at plywood, which is a common material used for the deck of longboards, as a reference. Finally, we have our resistance to rain and salt water. You'll see this in Granta EduPack in a few minutes, but we actually use words to describe the durability rather than numbers. So we're willing to accept materials that have a limited, acceptable, and excellent resistance to rain and salt water, because I can always apply a waterproof coating to my material. Next, we move on to our objectives. What are we trying to optimize here for our performance? Well, one easy thing to identify is the weight. I already said, like my climbing rope, if I have to carry this by hand, I want this to be as lightweight as possible. But in my description, I mentioned that I don't want the deck to deflect too much, which is related to material stiffness, but it also needs to withstand my weight plus a heavy school bag or maybe some groceries as I'm riding around town. That's related to strength. So which of these properties is going to limit the performance of my design? While yes, some minimum value of strength is important, which is why we have that constraint in the first place, stiffness is the property that we want to optimize here. So we are dealing with a stiffness limited design. And finally, we have our free design parameter. In this case, it's the thickness of the board, which allows us to consider a variety of different materials. And with that, we've gone through our translation step, and now we can identify our performance index. While we could go through a booklet and pick it out, for one last example, I'm going to derive it for you here. Our longboard deck is a panel in bending, so some rectangular prism with width W, thickness T, length L, and some force F in the middle. We care about the weight of our board, which gives us the equation mass equals area times length times density. So M equals W times T times L times rho. We have a stiffness limited design. Stiffness S is given by the equation F over delta, which is deflection. Now this is where it can get a little bit complicated and why having pre-derived indices is nice. The deflection delta of our deck of length L with some applied force F depends on flexural stiffness which we can calculate with Young's modulus E multiplied by the second moment of the cross section I. The loading condition, be it a point load, etc., will influence our constant C1. This turns our stiffness equation into something like this. For a rectangle cross section of W times T, our I is equal to WT cubed divided by 12. 
Plug that into our stiffness equation and we're left with this. A bit tricky, yes, but necessary. Our free variable is the thickness of the board. So we need to solve our stiffness equation for T so we can eliminate this from our objective function. We end up with this, lots of values to the power of one third. Plug our equation for T into our mass equation and rearrange the terms to separate out the ones related to material properties gives us a performance index of rho over Young's modulus to the one third power. This is the expression for mass we would want to minimize. But as we said previously by convention, we take the reciprocal and maximize the index. Both will give you the same result. Now that we have our constraints and our performance index, let's move to Grant to Edupack and perform our screening and ranking steps. We will use level two for this demo, starting with a limit stage to enter our constraint values for screening. This will drop us down to 47 material choices from our original 100. Next, we create a ranking chart. For this example, I'll use a selection line to implement my index. We want a chart with both properties from our index, so Young's modulus on the y-axis and density on the x. But what slope do we use for our selection line? This slope determines the direction of best performance. Rearranging the equation and taking the log shows us our slope will be three. By moving the line up and down, the value of m will change. I'll stop my line right here with six materials left. Four options are some type of wood with plywood lying right on our limit line. We also have a carbon fiber epoxy and a technical ceramic, boron carbide. Well, which of these materials is best? Well, that depends on a lot of factors, cost, environmental impact, processing conditions, and more. We can use tools like simulation to determine our free variable, which was thickness of the board and then use this information to calculate and compare things like cost and environmental impact. Check out the case studies linked on our resource links page of this course to learn more. And with that, we've come to the end of our lesson and our course on performance indices. We've shown what a performance index is. We've derived them. We've shown how we can implement them alongside Ashby charts in our material selection methodology and within Grant to Edupack, and we've gone through our case example just now to see it all put together. We hope that this course, as well as others in our material selection learning track, help you identify the top material candidates during your product design. My name is Dr. Caitlin Tyler, and thank you so much for joining me. I'll catch you in the next one.